Welcome to information session online on YouTube. I'm Masai Nakagi, I'm the Dean of KO Media Design. So for the next uh, one hour, uh, I would like to walk you through um, the unique features that we have at KMD. And I also uh, invited um, one professor and one student. So we can interact and you can see uh, from different lenses um, other than from Dean's lens. So let's get started. So KMD um, is committed to training um, new types of creative leaders for the 21st century skill sets. We believe, and, and um, things are proving um, to be true, uh, that we are in the creative society where the value of creativity is one of the most important factors for consumers in our everyday life. As you can see in this example of the futuristic building on the left, um, it is uh, Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao, Spain. Bilbao city is, has been known for in, industrial city, but unfortunately in decline. Now, um, this creative society of this one building transformed this uh, city economy from industrial city revenue stream to a tourist destination. One building, one design can change city economy. So, KMD is a center for looking at this creative society and we are continue to uh, contribute to building creative society but also training students to prepare themselves to become creative leaders which we call media innovators. We have multiple locations. Uh, we are headquartered in Hiyoshi, Yokohama in a very near Tokyo, maybe 15, 20 minutes away from central Tokyo. We also have um, another uh, lab in Osaka, western part of Japan, as well as several offices in Tokyo. In addition, we also have a uh, footprint in Singapore uh, with the collaboration of National University of Singapore or NUS. Since we have multiple physical locations, we would like to think as one big campus distributed in different locations. So uh, we use lots of um, internet technologies to connect these physical locations to feel that we are uh, as one unit rather than distributed in remote places. We made strategic decisions. Uh, we are using both English and Japanese as a formal language of communication and training. For the master's program, uh, if you decide to join us in April, uh, we expect you to understand uh, Japanese. And if you decide to join us in September, uh, we expect you to be fluent in English. For the doctorate program, uh, you can join either in April or September, uh, regardless of your fluency in either English or Japanese. As a result, we currently have about 50% um, of student bodies represented by international communities from different parts of the regions, which makes a very, very culturally rich community um, within KMD. We also admit students from diverse uh, disciplines um, in undergrad education um, or in the pra professional practices. As you can see from philosophy, law, engineering, education, computer science, design, um, dentistry, and even medical schools. We also admit students um, of different age groups, um, starting from very early on in the 20s, going all the way up to 60s, almost a parent and kid relationship. This age group diversity is very important for us because um, different age groups have different value sets. Some of the um, elder ones have um, launched some, uh, a startup and successfully IPO'd the company. Some of them have served CEO or board of directors of publicly traded companies. Uh, some of the, our students have been um, very successful as an independent uh, professional in, say, music or architecture. 
we therefore would like to um, encourage students to collaborate uh, rather than doing their solo projects of their interest. So you can see uh, we are um, forcing students to team up and how to build a strong team is part of the learning process. Anything we do um, strives for impact. Since we are a graduate program, we definitely look into academic excellence, but we don't want to stop just publishing academic papers and um, in international conferences and journals. We will continue our projects until we hit the marketplace. Otherwise, we try to collaborate with international partners to um, solve some of the global issues ahead of us. So academic, but more importantly, social and economic impacts are the goals that's set for all the projects that we do here at KMD. Example, um, so this is a um, eyewear, eyeglass called Jeans Bean, which is now commercialized that you can purchase, but it was prototyped um, multiple times between the company JIN in Japan um, and KMD as well as several other universities. So um, prototyping gives us a um, understand, better understanding of how, how the users might want to use these products in the future. Then going through multiple iteration processes, um, we have finally able to launch this product. Another example is uh, we are invited by a redevelopment company in Tokyo to join forces on the Takeshiba District redevelopment project. Takeshiba District is very close by uh, the 2020 Olympics and Paralympic sites. And we hope that this district will become a um, hub of Tokyo or even Japan, known to be for innovation and creativity. Therefore, um, the companies have invited KMD to become um, the core part of the team to design how this district can become a hub for innovation and creativity by bringing in different components that KMD has been working on. The way we do projects and education at KMD is um, through design thinking, iterative um, pipeline process, as well as um, encourage students to make things. Um, but when we say make, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you make tangible artifacts or music or video but it also means making businesses, making industries, making cities, making legal structures. We also use storytelling in our classroom and also in the projects um, to effectively communicate your project ideas to the end customers. So of course we need some facilities for making things possible. Um, we have um, studios, that allow students to work on intangible making, such as music. Um, we also have a space for tangible artifacts making and prototyping using 3D printers, laser cutters, and other equipment. Anything we do is not meant to be knowledge transfer, as in the old school style of lecturing of giving you the knowledge. Uh, I think knowledge can be accessed widely through different types of MOOCs online. Um, there are lots of textbooks, there are lots of online reading materials, and so I don't think uh, universities should offer um, knowledge transfer ki kind of classes anymore, but we should focus on giving you a special extraordinary experience through try and error processes sometimes. We would like to go beyond classroom experience and university um, campus experience. So we send out students to go for um, field work for ethnographic studies, for example, to observe. Also um, listen to people, uh, interviews. Um, also, um, if necessary, go out to the field to acquire scientific numerical data, as you can see on the bottom left. Because we are also looking into um, hitting the marketplace, uh, we also have our own acceleration program 
uh, similar to Silicon Valley kind of um, incubation. It is our formal um, course that offers students an opportunity to think through from ideation all the way through pitching to the venture capitalist community. We have both master's and um, doctoral courses um, track. And for the master's, there are several required courses and electives. But um, your two-year program's um, central um, devotion goes into real projects. The important part of projects is that you, we don't know, the faculties don't know the answer. Um, so it's a collective effort to do, go through the try and error processes. For the doctor track, there's no required um, courses. Of course, you are welcome to um, take some of the master level courses if you wish to do so. Uh, but the um, central part of your mission is to go through your research proposal um, idea um, with your main supervisor and complete your mission. For the master's course, um, we have two residential programs. Um, one is called SEMS, C-E-M-S. It's a double degree program to give you um, a master's in media design, but also the second master's in international management. Currently, SEMS program is a collection of 29 or 30 uh, business schools around the globe. And our students will spend two semesters, one semester each in our partner schools. For example, you may choose to go to, I should say, in Paris for one semester and be immersed in another culture, say, in Sydney for another semester. Similar mindset, focusing on design instead of international management, we have a residential program called Global Innovation Design Program, or GID program in short. Our partners are in London and New York. In London, uh, you will be joining um, the master's program, uh, a program designed by Royal College of Art, RCA, and Imperial College. In New York, uh, you will um, join Pratt Institute um, industrial design master's program. So again, one semester in London, one semester in New York. Both the, of these residential programs, um, you will be spending two semesters out of our four semesters of master's uh, program. And we believe that is, that is a bit short for um, giving you a KMD experience. So both SEMS and GID program uh, require students to extend by one semester. So instead of four semesters, it becomes five semesters. The RCA um, Imperial and um, Pratt Institute GID program um, is not designed for design background students. Um, if you have design background students, you're welcome to join. But um, anybody who does not have design background students will probably b benefit more. This example of um, furniture is uh, designed by students who have studied economics or law um, and for the first time in their lifetime they have built their own furniture. For a shorter um, exposure of international experience uh, we have two uh, very strong um, but short uh, programs. One is called EBA certificate program which stands for evidence-based approach. Evidence-based approach is a very important um, discipline right now to collect data from um, on, on the field, but also mix with online data sets such as big data. How can you understand um, through the, this com combination of data is the analysis part of EBA. In order to achieve these goals, um, our partners in ASEAN uh, universities in Asia, uh, each university will give some kind of two, two, two weeks to maybe a month at most, a very short visit of field work and data collection and analysis exposure. The other short program is um, our collaboration between Stanford University's uh, School of Education and School of Engineering Design Impact Program. 
This is a five-week intensive program. Uh, the first two weeks, uh, our students from KMD will visit Stanford and kickstart the project with Stanford students and faculties. After um, going through the two weeks period, there's one week um, idle time that they will do their own uh, research. Then the final two weeks, Stanford students and faculties will join us in KL uh, at KMD and fit, continue and finish the project. It's five weeks, very intensive, uh, short, but very fruitful. So, um, as I mentioned already, um, KMD's uh, value proposition is centered around real projects. So, every student must join one of the real projects uh, that we offer. So, I will go through and give you an overview of what kind of 11 real projects we have today. So, first project is called Embodied Media Project that looks at um, your whole body experience. And the second project is look at um, play, playfulness and entertainment. Um, so this example is looking at shoes and how can shoes, by uh, wearing a shoes, have a playful experience. The third project is called Pop Power Project um, that looks at the Japanese unique um, strengths of pop power, such as cosplay, pop culture, and all these anime and manga culture. Creative Industry Project looks at Japanese traditional craftsmanship and we uh, strengthen and redefine the industry to the global marketplace. This example is uh, we are collaborating with Fukui Prefecture's Sabaya City, known for um, eyewear but also for Japanese lacquer. So what if we can um, give a form, a unique form through 3D printing and then um, Japanese lacquer craftsmen can um, lack, lacquer the, um, the form so that you have a unique form of Japanese lacquer. Oikos project looks at everyday life. Um, so the uh, picture on the left is a, um, a, a vehicle or motorbike designed for couples um, to drive in the city. The Oikos project is now focusing more on the service industry, or how do you design services. Creato project is trying to blend um, the physical reality with the virtual reality um, because we are dependent on many of the virtual social media space today, but we live in the physical space. So everything we do in physical space have some link to the virtual space. And so this project is looking at integration of both virtual and physical. Guy's project, um, so one of my guests today is uh, Professor Kai Kunze. Um, so he leads the Guy's project, probably better that I have him talk about Guy's project. But as you can see, uh, Guy's project is currently looking at eyewear computing. Network Media Project is looking at internet um, and the use of internet in various um, different purposes. One of the biggest issues that we have today is how do we um, make sure our private information are secure um, and when do you make it public in exchange of getting some important and valuable services. So um, Neat Network Media Project has launched a consortium called Information Bank. Global Education Project is looking at new type of education that um, are connected by, by the internet. In this picture, you can see many of the ASEAN universities are um, connected in real time to do university courses. But global education is not only for higher education, but they're also looking for kindergarten um, K-12 education or lifelong learning. Digital Kids Project um, is focusing on small kids' creativity and how we can enhance the creativity so when they become adult, they are continue to be very creative to serve the creative, uh, creative society uh, leadership. We also have some futuristic project called um, Superhuman Sports. 
that we try to invent new sports, um, bringing in new technologies, advanced technologies, such as drones, HMD, virtual uh, reality, and um, haptic interface. We have uh, key strategic decisions. Um, we are using both English and Japanese. Uh, we have multiple physical locations, and our projects are not uh, meant to be designed for academic excellence only, but we strive to hit the marketplace if possible. So, um, currently we have some interesting um, news. Um, we have joined forces with um, Yokohama Bay Stars, which is a baseball team, um, and uh, the hu Superhuman Sports uh, Project. We are now opening up a new physical facility in the city of Yokohama, um, under the base, uh, the Yokohama Bay Stars um, facility called Creative Sports Lab. We were named um, ranked number six in Asia um, in the um, uh, international management uh, discipline. Uh, so we are the best in Japan according to this ranking in Japan. So uh, with this, I would like to invite um, two guests. First off, with um, Professor Kai Kunze. Hi, hello. Hi, good morning. So, um, I have already briefed about what you're doing in Real Project. Uh, maybe you can explain what Geist means <laughs> <laughs> and then what Geist is trying to achieve. Yes, yeah, so uh, Geist is actually German. Uh, it's for ghost or also mind. So, okay. it has the two meanings. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm kind of also maybe special because I'm also German faculty, so yeah. not Japanese. Also, when I came here, I didn't really speak Japanese first. And actually, the project focuses, comes out of my background. I think also I'm maybe relatively unique because mm -hmm. I came from academic background compared to other professors who are more, you know, kind of industry centered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, guys centers around this idea of actually empowering your ghost, empowering your spirit. And then is all about human enhancement and also uh, trying to find technologies to scaffold us, to help us develop, you know, kind of also towards transhumanism. So that's why I also kind of I'm involved in Geist as well as superhuman sports mm -hmm. uh, to mm -hmm. some extent. Mm -hmm. And one good example I think is Jin's meme that you also introduced. So that came directly out of the academic side of, of my working. So I was working maybe around 15 years in wearable computing technologies. And then, you know, kind of through KMD also got the opportunity to directly bring this technology and this academic knowledge to market. Mm -hmm. And we still have a close link actually still to uh, academic excellence. So two weeks from now, we will go to CHI, so to the CHI conference, the biggest uh, human computer interaction conference in the world. And also afterwards, we'll visit Google. So Google X is also one of our collaborating partners. So not only striving for excellence, I think, in Japan, but also internationally. Great. So. Um Maybe a, a bit of sensitive question to you mm -hmm. is now um, not a Japanese faculty. Um, why did you choose KMD as your destination? You have lots of other choices in the US and Europe and maybe other locations. Oh yeah, kind of this is strict. So I mean, this all came from, I was at Park Palo Alto Research Center. Mm -hmm. I spent some time at the MIT Media Lab. So I had the US uh, side of, of, of research and also I spent of course I grew up in Germany I spent some time in Austria I was working with ETH so mm -hmm. Zurich uh, uh, Switzerland and uh, then you know kind of also through closer connections to some of the crazier researchers so Inami Sensei <laughs> who was here beforehand right. but also Takemoto Sensei with whom we're collaborating from Sony CSL and so on I got introduced to some of the Japanese side mm -hmm. of things and I find yeah, it's a very unique and far out vision of the future. And I just think compared to, to Germany, especially that always, you know, kind of have, has ethical and other privacy concerns that are valid and kind of important. I think that here it's easier to develop our vision mm -hmm. and actually really hit 
society with mm -hmm. these things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for me also KMD is just a very, very special place because you're not only focusing on just academic excellence or papers in you know, specific journals, but it's actually up to the professors to decide what to focus on and what is important. And also then for the students to actually decide for themselves also what they want to do. And that led to some really, really nice collaborations. I mean, one example is uh, Alvara, a student from Saudi Arabia, who, you know, kind of tried to transform also his society because there's a lot of problems with obesity mm -hmm. and so on, mm -hmm. and trying to, to shape you know, the individual cultures also of the countries the students are coming from and coming with this unique background. So that's for me, I think, one of the strongest motivations you know, I came here for maybe wanted to stay a year. Now it's three and a half years. And Good. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's bring in a, another guest, um, one of our students. Um, so each year we take about 80 students plus for a master's level. And so we have about 160 to 170 master's students mm -hmm. on board. And so um, you're one of them. <laughs> okay. So, um, and we understand you're not Japanese, so you yes. also had lots of um, other choices to make. Uh, uh -huh. What was your motivation to join KMD? Because um, I was studying in the US um, when I was in college, and uh, I have a senpai, like, a, how to say that, senpai in English. Like, I have a graduated uh, student mm -hmm. who's also from my college, and uh, was studying in KMD and I talked to her that I want to do something like uh, making something or design something to to how does it to solve a problem on mis misunderstanding of the cultures, especially Japanese and Chinese side. And I talked to my senpai and saying, uh, like for me, the grad school is more like a, doing some research. Mm -hmm. So where is the place I can I can really make something? And she told me, oh, I'm in KMD. KMD is some place that you always can design or making or creative something by yourself. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, the reason I choose KMD. Good. Mm -hmm. OK, so now you're with us. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of uh, special experience or experiences mm -hmm. have you had so far at KMD? Well, um, the first is the, the real, real project was really we're making a lot of things and creative things. Which and project the, are you Oh, involved? I mean the global education. Global part. education, yes. okay. Now it's designed for the foreigner students. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also joined this, it's a project called Stanford, uh, it's called Project Based Joining that between KO side and the Stanford side, mm -hmm. Stanford University. Mm -hmm. And that's a quite interesting one because um, there's a lot of like cultural difference in the in the world, but there's something that actually you can connect between design something, design thinking, or of the design project. That's yeah, that's one interesting part I really experienced mm -hmm. this year. Good, good. So um, for the real project, and um, you're now starting to think about your thesis. Mm -hmm. Yes, <laughs> going to submit very soon. Right. My so, um, what is your strategy, and um, what? How do you relate your thesis with projects? Um, because I also have a big problem. That's um, how to speak a foreign language out like, on the speak speaking part, especially speaking part. Because reading and writing was not too hard, but the speaking is always hard to do. And I talked to the uh, professor Keiko Sensei, and she actually um, introduced me and saying, um, "Is why not to make something like system based part that you can solve that." type of the questions. Mm. So I'm trying to use like a movie or drama and, the, uh, and or the variety show in Japan and cut off the words from the, the actor and give your own voice of it. Then practice the, um, practice the Japanese or maybe English. Okay, so um, both of you, if you are to give a very short uh, message to our audience mm -hmm. um, from faculty lens and student lens, what would you say about KMD? Mm, I think it's quite unique place and I think, I mean, if you're looking for maybe a 
just a graduate school just to get a degree maybe I wouldn't recommend you to join mm. <laughs> if you have okay. some passion if you have something you want to do and you see also the relation to some of the professors because you will wor be working very close with one of us and you think you know you can use the expertise but to achieve something new mm -hmm. I think that's something they should really join and then also if you have this passion to follow through mm. Uh, that's something you know kind of I wanted to give you and then also thinking about how you what kind of impact do you want to live uh, want to give in the world and if you like that I think yeah come and join us great okay and from students voice um, yes as Masa-san says KMD is kind of a big family so one thing interesting in KMD that you will not be hidden like or be get one circle of yes I'm Chinese yes I'm Japanese yes I'm like one speaking English but in KMD actually you got a lot of people from different a lot all of the world and especially uh, it not especially but like yeah we have got a lot of people from different countries that's the interesting part that you would you will get the touch in different cultures and understand each other's that's the 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 regular how to say grad school cannot something that you cannot experience in regular grad school, but you can find find it out in KMD. So I'm saying it's good. Okay, we're well, welcome. Thank you both for joining. Thanks. So I hope they have convinced you that KMD might be a good place. So mm -hmm. I would like to continue um, with my slides. Let's see. So I would like to brief you about the application process. The application process is in two parts. Um, the first screening is um, your submission of um, paper documents. The details are described um, in our PDF that you can download from KMD's website uh, as an application package. It gives you all the instructions, detailed instructions of what needs to be submitted and how, what kind of information needs to be included. We will assess um, the documents and hopefully very positively to look at your potential. Um, we don't expect you to be um, a professional in the field of media design. As I have explained, we admit students from very, very different backgrounds. So the more different background you have, sometimes it's better for us. Um, but we want you to think about what is your potential to become a creative innovator, which we call media innovators. So what, why do you want to be at KMD? Um, and then what kind of experience do you think KMD can provide to prepare you to become media innovators? So second screening is about oral examination or interview in short. The interview, um, if you are not residing in Japan, um, can be done over Skype or any type of video conferencing system that we can agree on. So you do not have to invest um, in traveling to come to Japan. But of course, if you wish to do so, um, you're welcome to come to Japan. Um, so oral examination and written examination, two parts. To apply to KMD, um, letter of recommendation, um, portfolios, or um, if you're not English native, um, English um, language school is not necessary. However, um, if you want to join us in April as a master's student, we do want to make sure you can uh, speak English and or Japanese. Um, to prove your Japanese fluency, we require you to have N1 score, which is a level of Japanese uh, language assessment score. For the GID program and SEMS program, again, um, details are written in um, our PDF. Um, so I will just explain you how to apply for the GID. The um, additional documents for GID and SEMS program are necessary on top of the KMD application packet. So portfolio for the GID program portfolio, um, TOEFL or IELTS English score, and um, additional GID statement of purpose, uh, these documents are necessary. When we say portfolio at KMD, it does not necessarily mean your background um, example, sample of artworks and design works, 
but it can include whatever you have done in the past that you think uh, it shows your strengths. Maybe it's a um, social commitment, doing volunteers, um, working for NPO, maybe you have interned in a company, maybe you have written a business um, plan, uh, maybe you are an engineer so you know how to code things and you have created an app, for example, and released it. Anything that you have done in the past, we consider it as a portfolio. Um, but um, the more visual um, you have in the portfolio, the better we can understand, not through the text and writing, but um, through visual media. So, um, KMD is a place for diversity. Um, we have lots of um, activities around design excellence, um, technology, digital technology excellence. Uh, we also have strong focus on management, in particular international management. Um, we also are looking into policy. Um, when we design a city, it involves legal structure change, um, maybe um, doing a new legal structure for the industry. Anything has um, of this sort level, we call it policy. Projects are not only for academic excellence. Um, industry collaboration and um, social and economic impact are very, very important for us. So all the, most of the real projects have external partners, either uh, private companies, um, government, um, or sometimes NPO, international organizations. KMD is a place for team collaboration. So if you are um, only interested in doing your own uh, research agenda um, as a solo project, KMD might not be a good place. Uh, remote collaboration is in important for us because we have multiple physical locations. Our partners, um, industry partners, could be uh, spread out in different places, different countries. So when we say team collaboration, it's not only about within KMD uh, or within Japan, but also it is about global collaboration. So with this, um, I hope um, I have spent enough time to explain you uh, the unique features of KMD that are very, very different from many of the traditional um, graduate programs or postgraduate programs. So with this, I would like to um, go through a list of Q&A. So um, if you have any questions, please type in. Um, the text um, will appear on my screen and I will read it and answer your questions. So um, question number one, does KMD accept business related students? The answer is, of course, yes. Um, business, uh, policy, um, economics, any of these different types of students are always welcomed. Question number two, how are the lectures? Um, what are the project output done by masters? So I think there are two questions. Lectures, uh, we try to minimize the straight um, lecturing um, and trying to bring in more proactive participatory uh, workshops and hands-on experience. Uh, students collaborate in classroom, uh, work together, discuss, um, build things um, and, and show and present. The project output, um, as you have seen in real projects, most of the real projects are um, a output effort of master students team efforts. Number three, is it okay for someone um, with no design background to apply to GID program? Yes. Um, in fact, uh, many of our past uh, GID batches have studied economics, law, letters, um, and different disciplines, and sometimes engineering. Um, I think your background uh, mixed with what you will learn uh, through the GID program and in the field of design will um, augment your capacity. Okay, number four. Um, I'm interested in, in the human, compu human computing research at KMD. Can you share about more experience and works related to this? Um, I can explain, but I think I can invite back Kai for this. So, as a um, 
top-notch hu HCI human computing researcher. Uh, what would, how would you answer to this? Uh, I mean, it depends on what people are interested in in HCI. So, I mean, my background is mostly Ubicom and, and variable computing. So we're publishing at top-level conferences. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, also for CHI, we now have... Uh, we have, I think, strong expertise in human augmentation and enhancement. So now we have also a workshop at CHI where three of my students are joining. So in this case, you know, kind of if you're joining, especially I think also Minamisawa Sensei, the embodied media group, mm -hmm. or also I think Play, your project, uh, there are the opportunities to go to academic conferences mm -hmm. to also participate in this, but not only stop there. So you, you, know, you might visit if you get a paper accepted or a workshop paper accepted, you might go to CHI to you become to one of those major ACM and IEEE conferences, like also the IoT conference last year. Um, but then it doesn't stop there. We really try to work then with the top-notch researchers in the field. So in this case, Jun Rekimoto, Albrecht Schmidt from Germany, Wuta Gu from KAIST, mm -hmm. and Ted Sterner, Georgia Tech, and then also Google X. Uh, to bring these things to market. One example is Jin's meme. Mm -hmm. We're now working with Google X on some topics and try to then not only have the papers, but also try to set you up to kind of go to industry and apply the HCI knowledge or so on. So other right. examples are also trying to publish things in the app stores mm -hmm. and try mm -hmm. to get... Right, so we also have another there. very strong um, commercial um, effort uh, with a game designer and project professor of KMD, um, uh, Mr. Tetsuya uh, Mizuguchi. He is a well-known game designer, right? Um, and uh, his company with KMD and Rhizomatic, a Japanese a design company, um, have co-designed uh, for PlayStation VR platform a haptic suit that you wear. Um, and then while you're playing a game, uh, you get hit in your back, um, or you have a sensation of getting hit by <laughs> in the back, uh, or um, maybe somebody is touching you um, from, from um, uh, of your right arm, and so you you have this feeling uh, through haptic sensation. So this is not a um, academic only uh, contribution, but we are we have actually debuted the suit um, in 2015 uh, PlayStation VR conference in San Francisco. A huge. Uh, commercial industry exhibit. So again, this is um, hum human computing in research, but it's not um, how do you design web better, but it's more about using your whole body. Um, so we are looking at uh, uh, a wider uh, interpretation of what human computing means. Mm -hmm. right. And I think also there now, we are, but we are continuing also on the academic side in mm -hmm. this. So for example, SIGGRAPH, these things are also accepted. And I think especially I think our expertise is human enhancement, human augmentation. You so using not stopping at just the interface, but really trying to internalize things. So working on mind and body as a new user experience, but also skill transfer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then kind of you know I think then yeah, especially in haptics and also in the playful technologies and storytelling, I think we are very strong in this aspect academically and on the company side. Right. Yeah. Great. Thank you. So moving on to the next question. Uh, what kind of career path you want to continue after finishing KMD? So it's not for me, I hope. So I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Um, so what kind of career path are you envisioning in the future? Maybe immediately after KMD, but otherwise um, in, a, in the longer run. Mm. Very hard question to answer right now. Because I'm doing job hunting yep. right now in Japan. It is Japanese season in Japan. And uh, actually, I was planning to go to the PhD like after graduate from the master because I'm working on the education part. And mm -hmm. the education part is, is kind of hard to finish one real project in two years. So right. I was trying to maybe bring it to the PhD. But uh, yes. Con and thinking about the situation of my age and the, the <laughs> Japanese society, probably it's better to have a job first. But it's like, yeah, it's my yeah, real you world. You can always come back. <laughs> I want to. I want. I want back from uh, from my workplace after uh, three years or four years. I would say I love KMD more than a 
a, a job a, a job place in Japan mm -hmm. probably. Okay, mm -hmm. great, thank you. So let's see if I have any other questions here. Um, yes. So what is the goal of KMD? How is different from SDM, our neighbor? Mm -hmm. I think um, the best way to understand the um, uniqueness of SDM is that you visit them or talk to them or at least um, read their website uh, to understand the difference. I think um, KMD's uniqueness um, is well described by my peers as well as um, my slides. So I, I hope you captured the very unique component of KMD. Um, for you to understand what SDM is about is something that you should uh, make an effort to uh, um, go to their information session. What kind of background knowledge should someone have um, before coming to KMD? Um, every, everyone has different background. Um, so anything that you have done in the past that you can be confident um, about the, the discipline, um, that's the best. Um, we are not expecting you to start to read books on media design and join KMD. Um, we can train you after you join us. Mm -hmm. um, that's my pitch. What would you say? I think you need to have a passion to learn something. Mm, and then, I mean, we are actually, that might sound strange to you, but we are actually not there to teach you, but we are there to learn with you. So in this case, you know, especially, I think for starting around two years ago or so on, um, most of the students that joined also me or so on were technical because they felt comfortable with, oh, you know, kind of I'm doing academic work and, you know, with the previous work. But now actually, now I have now a wide range of designers and also people with business background and that gives a much better project and gives much better results for the project. So I'm really encouraging you also, so especially also if you have non-technical background, it's okay also to join some of the more technical projects here because that gives variety and that gives us actually our strength. And I think that's also the unique selling point from KMD that we have the different professors from management, from psychology, from policy, mm -hmm. and we can work together and then actually work on something that's relevant to society. Mm. As a student, what, what would you recommend? Um, when I was in the undergrad, I was studying linguistics, mm -hmm. so it's nothing about design <laughs> or management or technology part of policy even. So I would say yes, why get into KMD? I have no idea, So, but I'm here right now. So I would say right. nothing is fine, just keep starting because I'm also learning the technology part, especially on the system design thing. Mm -hmm. So I would say, yeah, passion is one thing that, the, something that you really want to learn in the KMD is very important. Okay, I hope uh, we have answered your question. And the final question is, are there any scholarship available for international students? The answer <laughs> is yes, um, but unfortunately, um, KO has very limited um, resources to give out um, the scholarship, so not everyone will get it, but there are some seats available for um, the scholarship. Um, on our website, uh, there is uh, some external sources of um, scholarships that you might consider to apply, and depending on eligibility of your background, um, some of them are applicable, some of them you may not be, be able to apply, but at least uh, we did some effort to search for external funding sources for you. Um, one of the competitive but best uh, is the Japanese um, Ministry of Education Scholarship, uh, which give you um, all the tuition waivers and then even month monthly stipend. But, um, so if you know any scholarships that you should search um, proactively and um, the, although the answer is yes to this question for K from KL, um, you're not guaranteed in any ways that um, until you become part of us, it is very difficult for us to give you um, the answer. So um, I think our time is up. Thank you very much for joining. Um, and I hope uh, we will see you online um, when we will do an interview with you um, and then be able to have you on board um, in the future to join forces on real projects. So, 
Thanks very much and hope to see you again.